In Gradle, a task can depend on another task, which means the other task runs first. That's very cool because we only need to remember to pass one task to the Gradle command, and Gradle will handle the rest. For example, in a Java project, you can just run the build task, and it will run all the tasks required to produce a tested artifact. How can you see what's going on under the covers, though? Well, Gradle creates a graph slash tree representation of all the tasks that take part in the build based on what task you pass on the command line. We can access the task graph through the Gradle APIs. We have to set up a closure to be called once the task graph is ready. But within that, we can print the list of all tasks which are taking part in the build. Let's try this out in this bog standard Java project. When we run the build task, we get a list of all the tasks that Gradle needs to execute just to run build in the order in which they'll be executed. That's cool. Although, to be fair, we could have derived this information anyway without making any changes to our build by passing the console equals verbose option on the command line. OK, so that's two ways to get a list of the tasks to be executed, but I think we'd prefer something a bit more graphy, or perhaps tree e. Yes, wouldn't it be nice to see a tree of all the tasks taking part in the build linked by their task dependencies? Fortunately, some kind people have created plugins for us to do just that. The best one I've found so far is the task info plugin, link in the description. It can be applied to a Gradle project like so. We can now run whatever task we want to see the tree for along with the TI tree task. So in our case, that's Gradle W build TI tree. When we run this, the plugin cancels the build task so our project doesn't actually get built. And instead, it prints a pretty tree for us. Here, the root of the tree is the build task, which was passed on the command line. The lines to assemble and check represent task dependencies, and so on and so on, all the way up the tree. The good thing about having the tree representation is we get a better understanding of our build and can be more specific about what task we want to run. For example, if you've changed some Java code and just need to compile your application, you can just run assemble rather than build, avoiding the time taken to execute tests. If you'd like to learn more about the Gradle task graph in Java projects, then check out my free introductory course. It's called Get Going with Gradle, and it helps developers like you work more effectively with Gradle.